Okay, uh, thanks for staying back for the last one. I'm Praveen Yelagandula, I'm the OpenStack architect at Avi Networks, and today it's going to be about advanced network services in OpenStack, particularly focusing on load balancing as a service. How many of you know about load balancers? Yes, hands up. Okay, that's good. So I'll still, it's a open, uh, beginner session, so I'll just give a quick overview of uh, what the load balancing is, as you all know, load balancing, the main goal is about high availability. If you have a single server and you're maintaining a website on it and if something goes wrong, you lose business. So what you do is you typically put multiple servers, put a load balancer instance in front of it that's going to spread your traffic coming from users onto these uh, different servers. And it has to monitor all these servers to make sure that if some, one of them goes down, stop sending traffic to it, and then just send the traffic to the rest of the up servers. Now, uh, for high availability, you don't want just one load balancer, you want two of those. Over time, there is more expected out of the load balancers, and uh, you have heard this term called application delivery services, so there is a lot more advanced features instead of just packet spraying that is expected out of load balancers, like for example, session persistence, where the idea is that you, instead of spraying the requests or connections coming from a user across all your web servers, you want to persist the connection to just one specific server and send all the requests to that server. And if you have another user, you basically send it to another server for better load balancing. And another kind of advanced feature that people look for is like policy-based switching, like say you have two pools of servers, like a media servers that are better at uh, serving images and you have another set of servers that are good at like doing secure transactions. Then if you have like somebody browsing images, you want to send that traffic to the media servers and then somebody, uh, once they switch to the cart or checking out, you want to switch to the secure servers. Now notice that these all come at, uh, uh, on the HTTPS, so secure uh, transactions. And the load balancer, to be able to do that, has to do the SSL termination, right? So otherwise it won't be able to look into the packets too. And another reason people want SSL termination on the load balancers is this is a nice place to uh, implement all your enterprise policies. For example, SSL v3, you may not know that it's like uh, broken, so you don't want to use it. So you can put a rule there that don't use SSL v3 and use only TLS v2. So and there are a bunch of uh, these kind of advanced features that are applicable to L4 to L7 load balancing that's uh, are expected out of load balancer. Uh, let's switch to what's there in OpenStack today in terms of the LBAS APIs. So LBAS version one API was introduced in grizzly time. It was a very simplistic model. There is just a concept of pool that has a set of member servers. Those are IP addresses that are part of the pool. And there is a VIP, which is uh, both IP and a port on which the application would receive traffic. And there is a health monitor that uh, will be used to monitor the pool members. Unfortunately, the simplest model didn't have support for multiple ports, whereas most of your HTTP applications run on both port 80 and 443 and it didn't have the support for SSL termination, no policy-based load balancing, so very pretty simplistic model. The uh, open source community, or LBAS team, worked on making the next version, LBAS version two model, which is better. Like it has uh, a, a deeper model, more complex, so there is support for multiple ports, and these are called listeners. There is a top-level load balancer object, which is the virtual IP where the traffic is received. And also there is the support for SSL certificates, the TLS containers and so on. And then there is support for policies too, L7 policies. So the LBAS version two APIs are much better than LBAS version one APIs. However, still the current APIs still have several limitations. Like you, if you want to use UDP, then you can't, uh, the LBAS version two API doesn't support it. There is limited SSL support and lack of custom health monitoring. I'm not going to go through the details, you can look up later. So that's about APIs. So we have gone, come along a long way in terms of API uh, 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 like uh, evolution, but still there is something more that needs to be done. Now moving on to how those APIs are implemented in OpenStack, so I'll quickly go through a couple of uh, different implementations that are common. The one is like uh, the uh, reference implementation using HA proxy, where there is one HA proxy per load balancer instance running on the network node uh, in your OpenStack. 
The problem is that uh, it's basically not uh, very scalable. And like if you have north south traffic that goes like that, and if you have east-west traffic that needs to be load balanced, it has to come all the way to the network nodes and go back. So overall, it's not very scalable. It's, uh, and also this solution doesn't have any inbuilt uh, high availability, so you have to do something more, and it's uh, uh, best effort tenant isolation because all those HA proxies are running on the same node, and if that goes down, you basically lose the HA, and also they are sharing the same resources. So this is not like really a, uh, an enterprise-grade uh, solution. The other typical solution that people have is based on the appliances, like if you have hardware-based load balancers, they typically put on next to your OpenStack, and then uh, you basically the north south traffic when it comes, it comes into the open stack, goes to the boxes and goes back. And similarly, the east-west traffic has to do that traversal too. And these boxes, because OpenStack can have uh, different underlays, they, uh, they, these boxes have to plug into the overlay and understand the protocols, uh, the underlay protocols to be able to communicate with those hosts. Overall, it's a pretty complex and expensive solution if you want to put the boxes outside. In contrast, the, the, the best architecture is a service VM architecture. So the idea is that in contrast to the left side of legacy where you have load balancers outside, on the right hand side you have the next generation service VM based architecture where you have a controller and it creates these data plane engines called service engines within the open stack and those do the load balancing. So it's a software based solution that, uh, that scales well with your open stack installation. The project in OpenStack, Octavia, uh, that's the OpenStack LBAS uh, project. So that implements this service VM architecture. It's a, uh, still a work in progress. There is a lot of features that are getting added to the Octavia project. So now I'm going to switch to uh, a RV, which where we do the same service VM architecture. We've been around for three and a half years, and we do uh, the software-based elastic load balancer that scales well, it provides application security and also visibility. And uh, we've been, as I said, like around five years, we have a bunch of customers that have deployed this uh, load balancer as a solution in OpenStack and different environments. So to quickly go through the architecture, we basically take the traditional uh, box-based designs of load balancer, we break them apart, and we separate out the control plane from the data plane and then distribute the data plane, which is uh, basically these uh, service engines, those small entities, and distribute them onto the compute itself, like it, whether it's on a bare metal or in a VMware and VM environment or in a container environment, or it could even run in the public cloud. And it's, our solution is this single central controller that can work against multiple clouds. And we orchestrate against all kinds of uh, orchestration frameworks for installing it and for using it. Like it works in OpenStack, VMware, or AWS, and so on and so on. And the other thing that we do is we have built-in visibility and analytics, so that gives key insights on how well your applications are behaving, the, for which the traffic is flowing through, the, uh, through, the, uh, through our uh, service engines. Um, the, for the OpenStack integration, the, our AVI controller talks to different uh, OpenStack components like Nova, Neutron, and we integrate it into Keystone, so you have the same tenancy model in AVI. And uh, we create the service engines per tenant, or you can have shared mode uh, for, uh, for, uh, for doing the load balancing. <coughs> So to just quickly go through how it works, so you have this uh, OpenStack controllers, and ignoring a lot of details, the way that we install is that you basically create AVI controller, which is a VM, and you create a neutron network, and you connect the AVI controller on that network and provide it credentials to reach the uh, uh, OpenStack. And if you have a user that has two servers and they want a load balancer service, what AVI controller does is it talks to the Nova and creates these service engine VMs and plugs them into the right network by talking to the Neutron. So that when there is a traffic for which that needs to be load balanced, we uh, service engine attracts the traffic and then load balances it to the servers that are where the traffic needs to be load balanced to. And note that the AVI controller dynamically creates these service engines as many as needed to based on the traffic and uh, to meet the performance guarantees. And this is all done by the AVI controller, like it's the, the brain for doing all this stuff. And if you have like multiple tenants, we will basically create multiple service engines so you have strong isolation. 
Uh, and because of this model, the service VM architecture, we have very flexible deployment models, like if you have tenant one and tenant two, um, and those kind of service engines. We have models where service engines can be created in the context of uh, tenant uh, uh, projects itself, or we can have all these service engines in a separate tenant. And we can even share the service engines across uh, tenant, uh, multiple tenants. And these are the kind of things that are still missing in the reference implementation today. And uh, we have had like this, the, this solution provides all kinds of flexible deployments. Uh, we have high availability uh, tool, like we do active standby. If some uh, service engine VM goes down, we automatically detect and create we have active active where you can have multiple service engine VMs and we will uh, split the traffic ac uh, across them and uh, basically take care of uh, making sure that creating more engines as needed. And we have N plus one, N plus M high availability models too. And other thing that I mentioned was uh, elastic scale. So when you have traffic coming and uh, the traffic increases on fly, we create more service engines so that we can uh, start to handle the traffic. And that way, you can basically have a true elastic uh, solution. Uh, we are f uh, fully integrated into Horizon, so your users don't need to go to a separate UI. We'll just uh, log in into Horizon, and in the load balancers panel, you start to see AVI, and you also get, like, for their applications, get deep analytics, deep visibility into how well the application is doing. So to summarize, AVI has uh, several advantages in OpenStack. It's an elastic load balancer with integrated analytics. We are 100% API driven. It's a distributed system that scales well. We do it up to four terabits per second is what we have uh, experimented with, 12 million transact SSL transactions per second. And we are fully integrated into Keystone for multi-tenancy and we provide deep uh, visibility and app insights. Uh, so it's an enterprise-grade ADC and analytics engine for OpenStack. And thank you. And if you have more questions, please uh, drop by our booth in Marketplace Expo. Thank you.